get started today. Okay. Uh, just as, as a, um, uh, a spirit of full disclosure, while, while it doesn't really sound like it completely right now, I'm actually a severe stutterer. And, and when I'm speaking to you right now, this is very much my artificial speech that's the product of consciously controlling all the words that come out of my mouth, okay? If I don't use that control, if I kind of turn it off inside of my head, it, it, it doesn't, doesn't take very long before I would do that every three or four words. Um, prior to learning the control, the, uh, the only time I could open my mouth without doing that, okay, was when I sang. Because, um, because music circumnavigates this particular disability and, and has a measurable effect on my brain, okay, and brains of other stutterers. And so, so for me, uh, music became very important. Uh, stuttering silenced me as a child, but me, but, and it isolated me like many disabilities often do, but music gave me a voice and also gave me a whole bunch of other voices to sing with. And, and that's part of the reason why I see these hidden voices frozen in, in the ice at the bottom of the planet. It's, it's why I seek sort of new ways of listening. So uh, last year, actually just a year ago now, I spent 40 days on the ice down in Antarctica. I was there with the National Science Foundation, and my job with the particular science teams I was embedded with was to learn what they do and to write music that tells their particular story, okay? Now, uh, many people say that visiting Antarctica is the closest anyone can get to visiting another planet without actually leaving ours, okay? And, and it, it, it very much felt like that. It's a place of immense beauty. The, 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 the colors, the lines, the sounds are gorgeous, but, but, but at the same time, it's, it's a place that's not meant for human beings. It's extremely dangerous. It's a place of terrible beauty. And for those of us that, that, that spent our time together isolated on the bottom of the planet doing good things, uh, we had to listen to each other in new ways to survive. We had to listen to the planet in new ways to, to survive and to, and, to, and to hear these connections that bring us, bring us together, okay, that, that in ways that are separated by geography and so many other ways. Well, uh, early in the trip, I got to visit um, at the top of a mountain where this machine lives. Um, my, my friend Yuki calls it the lightning machine. It's actually an ionization detector, and what it does is that it detects every lightning strike on the planet as it happens in real time. Okay, and so in the, in the picture here, you can see those lightning strikes being registered on, on the graphs visually, right? But of course, they also had an audio feed, and every lightning strike was like a pop. And so as I was standing there, at any moment of the day, it was like listening to popcorn popping in a microwave because, because one lightning strike might have been in Rochester, the other one might have been in Bangkok, but I was hearing them right next to each other. The actual sound coming out of the speaker wasn't all that nice to listen to. There's a lot of feedback there. There, there, there is an electronic kind of you know, production of sound, but that being said, it was beautiful to listen to the whole planet sing together. There was another way of looking at the beauty of what I was listening to, not just the raw sound. And I think that that, that that gets at the heart of what we do as hearing people, is that our sound, uh, a sound environment, um, tells us where our place is. It helps us understand where our place is in any given moment. Uh, one, of the, one of the great moments here was that, was that Yuki looked at me and said, well, you're a musician, can you hear anything else in, in the audio feed? So we spent some time and I heard a couple things and suddenly I realized that musical listening was something that mattered to scientists. It mattered in this isolated outpost at the bottom of the planet. So what is musical listening anyway? Okay, uh, we, we, we watch a musician on the stage, okay, we see them doing their thing, but musicians don't 
only listen to themselves on the stage. They listen to their relationship to other musicians. They, lis they listen to um, the, 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 the connection with the audience. They listen to the, the acoustics of the room that they're in. And in the midst of all these layers of sophisticated listening that a musician does, th th there's this ongoing drama okay, that connects us all between consonance and dissonance. And, and it's a drama that's measurable by musical frequencies. Okay? Uh, we don't have to measure them right now, but you will sing them right now. Okay, yes, yes, you have some work to do here. Okay, okay, everybody sit, um, sing this note for me. Sing, la, keep going, keep going, keep going, because as you sing that note, I can sing this one, or this one, or this one. And of course, all those notes are in consonance with each other, right? But of course, there's other ways in which we interact with each other. There's dissonance, not only consonance. So sing that note again. La. And I sing. La. And you really want me to change to. La. Right? Okay? Because, because we, we, we thrive on this connection with consonance and dissonance that music is such a great metaphor. Um, for and and so and so what I found was that being a musician at the bottom of the planet um, was was a new way of looking at the way in which we interact okay with this beautiful part of the world. Scientists and musicians are both professional listeners. We, we cannot separate them. Okay, both scientists and musicians use their skills and their technology to extend the senses of what we normally use in everyday life to visit new worlds, whether they're micro worlds or macro worlds, to, to, and, and then they come back and they invite the rest of us into that world. Okay, And so, and so that there's a lot of connections between the work of the scientist and the work of the musician. Well, inviting you into part of my world in Antarctica, I was um, on the Ross ice shelf. Yes, one of those tents was mine, okay? We, we, we lived out there, okay, for a couple of weeks, okay, working together with a science team from UC San Diego. The Ross Ice Shelf is about a kilometer thick and has the land mass that equals roughly uh, the, the size of the country of France, okay? And when you're out there, first of all, there's no, there's no topography, so there's no way of knowing which way is north, south, east, or west. In this picture, you can see that the sky actually blends into the snow, so you really don't even know what is up and what is down. It is called Yesterday Camp because to fly from McMurdo Station, you cross the international date line, and so you really don't know what day that you're actually in. And then you combine that with the fact that it is the Antarctic summer, and the sun never sets, it just is a circle in the sky. So you cannot tell what day, what, what time of the day it is, whether it's in the middle of the afternoon or the middle of the night. And so our senses are deceived. Uh, the normal ways that we perceive our place in the world is shattered. And so we need some other ways to find our place. The team that I was working with had put seismographs in the ice for two years. Okay, measuring the movement of the ice as it, as it responds to the water underneath. Now, I said it's an ice shelf, right? Okay, which means that it's a kilometer thick chunk of ice with water underneath it, no land. And so because of that, what happens is that, is that anything that happens anywhere else on the planet reverberates with the Ross ice shelf. It's kind of like, okay, when I play guitar, if I reach over and I pluck the string of the guitar, there's a vibration that comes from that string. That vibration translates into the wooden box of the guitar. The vibrations of the wood translate into the air, create sound waves that travel to your eardrums. Your eardrum resonates sympathetically with that sound and then translates that information into your brain. For the Ross Ice Shelf, what happens is that if you have a storm in the North Atlantic or you have a tsunami in Japan, the waves that travel through the water travel all the way to the ice shelf and it heaves it up. It sucks it down 
it creates waves within it. And so, and so the ice shelf uh, is this thing that resonates with the movement of the rest of the planet and is very much an indicator of ongoing, um, ongoing events of climate change. We camped on there. Our feet were on that ice, which meant that even though our feet could not perceive it, we were still resonating with the rest of the planet as those infragravity waves traveled from everywhere um, through the water, through the ice, through our feet, and, and into us. So what comes out of these seismographs? A whole bunch of numbers. Okay, some folks are intimidated by lists of numbers. Okay, like we said earlier with the lightning uh, machine, the audio feed was not particularly beautiful, but you could look at it in a new way and find the beauty of connection. Here, very much the same thing. Hard to look at lists of numbers, okay, and, and to feel, feel that, that sort of beauty, okay? Uh, it's a, not, not necessarily something that radiates beauty. Well, scientists turn those numbers into pictures that are beautiful, graphs and charts. Um, musicians turn those, the, the, these lists of numbers into melodies and harmonies. And so this is, this is, a, is a short clip of some sonification, a, a, a mathematical process of turning these lists of numbers into, into music. Uh, a, a new piece of mine called Tremble, a little clip from it. You'll, you'll hear a melody, but in the background, you'll hear these waves of sonified notes. Each one of those notes comes from from a, a, um, a number on this, on this particular chart. Here's a melody on top. So, 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 so it, it, it's a brief little glimpse into into things that 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 um, we as listeners have to ask the question. Okay, our eyes are used to analyzing things. We do that all the time with numbers and graphs and charts. Our ears are built more for understanding our place in the world. Okay, of uh, understanding our our place in the moment where we happen to be, where we're listening to sounds around us. In the unfolding world of climate change, I think that, that we need our scientists out there to help us understand the facts better. But we can also uh, invest our artists and our musicians into reminding us of how we are connected. And to, to, to find those ways in which the, 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 the waves and, and the resonance of the planet uh, resonates with our own life. In a world where everybody talks all the time, we can all listen better. And I think that, that, that if, we, if we step forward, we listen more deeply, there's, there's a chance that, that we can find a new place for us in the world, a new place in an increasingly connected world. Thank you so much.